grabar aquí. Hey, vamos a grabar. Muy buenas noches, muy buenas noches. ¿Ustedes están bien? ¿Cómo les va? ¿Sí? ¿Bien? Sí. ¿Bien? Sí. ¿Más o menos? Ah, bien, bien. Ah, bien. Sí, aquí ah, un poquito mal, pero no quieren saber. You don't really want to know. I told Jan only because she has a good ear and she knows my... <laughs> Terrible uh, technology problems. blessings for you. Um, to so use every everyone's on. job right now is to find a piece of wood and knock on it, yeah. <laughs> so that Windows 17 does not Windows 17 Windows 11 does not flip out on me again. Um, and I hope this weekend to say goodbye to Windows 11 and hello again to Windows 10. So we don't have these issues. Oh, okay. Muy bien, vamos a empezar. Vamos a practicar un poquito o vamos a practicar mucho, de verdad. Uh, aquí vienen más. Uh, vamos a practicar muchísimo con el pasado. We're going to practice a lot with the past. We're going to revisit that whole video about hermanos. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. ¿Qué les parece? What does it seem like to you? Were the siblings a little harder to understand at the end of that video oh, yeah. than Ana sí. and David? Sí, más rápido. Más okay. Rápido. Sí, más rápido. It is very hard to tell normal people, slow down how you talk. So uh, I, although I can understand them, I thought, ooh, they'll, they'll have trouble once they get to the siblings because <laughs> <laughs> or they may have trouble once they get to the siblings because Anna and David are more trained with working with people who are not native speakers and they are uh, conscious in a very good way of slowing down, but slowing down, not like to a baby pace, certainly, but doing it at a reasonable rate. So if you have a little trouble uh, managing with uh, los hermanos, la hermana de Ana y el hermano de David, um, no se preocupen. Don't worry about it. Uh, that is kind of to be expected. Uh, so we're going to take a look. Vamos a ver. Uh, you may want, you may want to have, I'm going to share with you. Ooh, and share is one of my things that's somehow a bit imperfect. Oh, yes, it's imperfect. <laughs> it's imperfect, not like the imperfect tense, but... Imperfect nonetheless. Uh, vamos a ver. Okay. Um, I sent you these charts, did I not, last week? Sí, la semana sí. pasada. Okay. Vale, magnífico. And one of my things, so pardon me, I'm trying to fix my Zoom screen when I share. This is one of the wonderful, not so wonderful issues with Windows 11 completely crashing on you. When you share screen, it makes all of you people into a square about this big. <laughs> I see the share screen and I see four faces and that's it. I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Uh, if you have the preterito chart and the imperfecto chart, if you're the type of person who really likes to have, you know, if you printed it, uh, you may want to have that up and ready to go, just so that you know what things to have ready. Um, I am going to have also the transcripts kind of heavy, uh, handy because I'm going to show you, uh, like in practice, uh, we'll kind of walk through two paragraphs and uh, then I'll open it up to whatever questions you might have had. Pero vamos a empezar, we're going to begin, vamos a empezar con... Uh, el pasado, porque es importante saber el pasado en español. Y vamos a repasar. Hay dos pasados. Es difícil hablar sin, without, sin a expresar ideas en el pasado. ¿Entienden? Uh -huh. Es imposible hablar de, del día, de las actividades del día, uh, uh, de, lo que, de lo que hicimos el año pasado, por ejemplo. Uh, 
it's impossible to talk about even your day, what you did, did past in the day without trying to at least get over this hump of what the past means. But the curveball, and it's a big curveball, I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's actually two big curveballs, or maybe a curveball on a knuckle wall, I don't know. But it's, uh, the first one is, there is not one past tense, there are two, okay? And the reason for that is that each of the two past tenses in Spanish convey different nuances to how this action happened. Now, the reason I personally really love reading things that are in el pasado is because when I see a verb in imperfect or when I see a verb in preterite, I immediately get a picture in my head of here's how the action was going on. It was snapshot, boom, and over, or it rolls along and along and along and shows me a long progression of something going on for a long time or, or painting a picture in the background for my brain. That's literally how my brain processes it because that's what they mean. Okay, el imperfecto. We're gonna look at the one that's easy to form first because that would be the el imperfecto. It is called the imperfect, which makes it sound like there's something wrong with it. Yep, there is not. It is in fact the most perfect tense in the whole language. Definitely is. It is most perfect. It is called imperfect because it indicates activities that don't have a definite beginning or end that you can tag on to it. That's why it gets the name imperfect. However, in fact, to conjugate it is pretty damn perfect because there are only three irregular verbs in the whole language. And so if you know these two little charts, which are kind of funny and easy to figure out, you can cruise through and, and your objective is going to be right now to understand el imperfecto and el preterito. Maybe not use it all perfectly, but to understand it when you hear it or read it. Um, forming the imperfect is really super easy because there are so few irregulars. Voy a engrandecer. I'm going to make this bigger. So the nice thing you know is that AR verbs always go in one camp. Yeah, for conjugation. ER and IR verbs always go in another camp and they hang together and they do the same thing. Well, that will happen with el imperfecto. <laughs> and everything for AR verbs is going to have some variation of ABBA, 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 which every 15-year-old kid I ever taught loved when you got to the word trabajábamos. ABBA, 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 ABBA. Aba, aba is a fun thing to say. It was a fun little thing for kids to remember and even for us adults to remember. And the aba, aba, aba thing always tells you it's an imperfect verb. And you know it's an AR verb because it's using aba. Okay. So the reason these are not hard to know is that there are always these patterns we have in Spanish with, um, and there's only one preterite will break a pattern, but all the other tenses follow these patterns. And, and the patterns are a two form will always have an S at the end. Ooh, except for that preterite that breaks the pattern. But all the other tenses will generally get a little S at the end. So that's why we got abas. Okay. Um, uh, when you're talking about more than one person, it's always going to get an N, that letter N at the end. So that's what it does in present. Okay. Hablar, <clears throat> perdón, you get hablas with an S at the end for tú. You get hablan with an N at the end for ellos. Same thing happens in imperfecto. You get an N at the end when you talk about a group of people, more people in the group. You get an S at the end. You get a mos at the end. You get a mos, an M-O-S for nosotros. Okay, so... In all these tenses, these patterns hold true. It's just that we kind of flip out the kind of suffix we use with this idea of, well, it's got an S at the end for tú. It's got an N at the end for more than one person. It's got a mos at the end for a we. Okay. So that's going to hold true. Uh, and they give you the examples. Trabajaba. I'm going to take a different verb, not 
uh, that I'll have, and it's very easy. It can be any verb you want it to be because all but three are regular. So it does not matter. I could say, I could pick, uh, I could, ooh, I could pick, I could pick, manejar, uh, uh, drive, right? Manejaba, uh, manejabas. Manejaba, ooh, nice. Yo and el a usted share the same kind of form, so they don't get different conjugations. So you may hear people using a pronoun with yo or el a usted if they don't think it's clear, you know, uh, from context. Trabajaban, or I'm sorry, manejaban, <laughs> different verb, manejaban, and uh, manejábamos, habamos gets an accent mark. Manejábamos, manejábamos. Okay, vale. I could take any AR verb and do that and use that. Okay, let's look what happens with for imperfecto with ER and IR verbs. We get all IA endings, some variation of IA, IA, IA. They all have accent marks, IA, all the time. So we're going to get an S at the end for tú. Okay. For, for yo, it'll be ella. For tú, it'll be ellas. For él a usted, it's going to share the same thing as yo form, ella. For the they're doing it, we tag an N on the end, ian. And uh, a we're doing it becomes a mos ending with the ia thing, okay? Iamos, iamos. So they give you comer, muy fácil. You can take any oddball, weird, Weird verb, verb that you think, I hate this verb. Uh, I don't like this verb. It's hard to conjugate. You can take, um, uh, no sé, reír, to laugh, which is a really irregular verb. It's a stem changer. It's got weird things. If it goes into imperfecto, if you want to say they were laughing, or we always used to laugh at his jokes, right? Uh, nos reía, tú. Te reías, él se reía, ellos se reían, nosotros nos reíamos. It does not matter which IR verb, which ER verb you pick, except for the three that we'll look at below. They all follow these patterns. So in that way, it's really lovely because you have distinct patterns to follow. Now, here are the three irregulars and the, probably not a big surprise. Ser always, almost always winds up being irregular. Ir always, almost, almost always winds up being irregular. And ver, ver isn't really irregular. So let's look at ver first. Ver goes in the irregular category because we don't take off the E of the ER. Well, that's not very hard to remember. So we keep the E from the ER instead of taking that infinitive ending off. And then we add the EF forms because it's an ER verb. Yay. So it really isn't that irregular, you know? Um, uh, beia, beia. So, okay, maybe a little hard to pronounce because you've got three vowels together. That is odd in Spanish. Not many verbs do that. Beia, beias, beia, beian, beiamos. Okay, vale. So that's irregular, but ser and ir are irregular because you, there are no endings. You need to know the whole word. Okay. So when we conjugate ser or when we conjugate ir for imperfecto, <clears throat> we don't take off the er from ser. We don't take away the ir from ir. We just slam in a whole different word. And that's why it's called irregular. Okay. And oddly enough, especially for ser, that verb ser in imperfecto, if you notice in the transcript, is super common. You will hear it all the time. Era, eras, still gets an S at the end for tú. Era, eran, still gets an N at the end for a they group. Eramos, eramos, we were, we were. Okay, so I want to focus on this verb ser because when you listened to the audio, the video, they used that, uh, the various forms of era a whole lot. We're going to take a look at that. 
This is a super common verb in imperfecto, even though it is one of the three irregulars. So the way you should think of the that column with the ser conjugations is yo era, I was, or I used to be. Tu eras, you were, or you used to be. El era, ella era, usted era, he or she used to be or was, okay? Ellos eran, ellas eran, ustedes eran. You guys used to be, you guys were. They were, and all it is is was and were. That's all it is. Éramos, we were, okay? So, ser out of all that group is a super uh, important one to just, to literally memorize, because you will hear it a ton a ton. Any time we describe somebody, like what they were like, personality wise, what they looked like in the past, that's a description. And it's going to use era or a form of era, right? One of the morphed forms of era. So, uh, Ooh, mis primos, mis primos eran muy altos. My cousins were really tall. I'm talking about what they looked like. And what they looked like, here's the key. What they looked like is not an event. They were tall. It's not something anybody did. It's just how they used to be. So that illustrates why it's got to be imperfecto. Anything that is a description in past ideas world needs to be an imperfecto. We don't have that ability as easily in English with a verb tense, okay, for past. Um, so in that way, Spanish is very, very different from what we do in English. You know, our reason for using imperfecto is different for our reason from using preterito. Um, let, me dig let me digress by just a little bit to show you the forms of ir. Those forms you see in the middle column with ir are not endings to slap onto the end of ir. It's the whole word, like it was the whole word for ser, okay? Iba. Ibas, Iba, Iba, uh, Iban, Ibamos. You've got that whole thing there. So, okay. Uh, you will hear imperfecto a la describir. And what this says is when we talk about colors, size, smell, taste, emotions, thoughts, opinions, um, Thoughts and opinions may get a little, a little murky, but don't worry about it too much. Um, generally, whenever we talk about descriptions or feelings, and feelings are descriptions, we need to use imperfecto. So, uh, and, and she says, especially with these verbs, haber, we're going to talk about haber in just a minute. Haber means, wait a minute, what does haber mean? Ooh, haber is a funny verb from which we get the verb hay. ¿Qué es hay? ¿Qué, ¿Qué quiere decir hay en español? Hay. H-A-B-E-R. There there is, are. there are. There is, there are. So if I need to be able to say there is, hey, there, there's, uh, ooh, uh, there's water running down the street. Uh, okay. Um, there are, oh, there are all kinds of kids in the park tonight. I need to be able to use that in the past too. So instead of there is and there are, it's there was and there were. were. And just like I is only I, okay? Uh, in the past, it's only gonna be había. It's gonna be regular. It starts with haber. It takes off the ER. It, it throws on the ia, and that's all you need to know. So I want to say, wow, there were all kinds of kids in the park. Había muchos muchachos en el parque. 
There was a lot of traffic tonight. Había mucho tráfico. Ooh, there were clouds in the sky this morning. What happened with that? Había nubes en el cielo. Había. And just like all you had to know was I, all you got to know is había. Yay, muy fácil. So haber is one of the words that we use a ton in imperfecto. And you will very rarely, rarely, if I put a percentage on it, 5% of the time. You'll only use preterite for haber maybe 5% of the time. Maybe. 95% is a lot. So había is your friend. Había is just the past of I. I right now, but había, there was or there were. Okay, bien. So past, haber, here are other verbs that wind up being used in imperfecto a lot. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, tener, to have, a lot in imperfecto, more than preterite. Ser, a lot in imperfecto. A fair amount in preterite. Estar a whole lot in imperfecto. Think about it. We use estar to talk about location and feelings, right? Okay. If I say a street is on the corner, is that an event? Is that something that, like it happened? No. So anytime we talk about where something was located, we need to use estar in imperfecto. And estar is regular in imperfecto. It's regular because there are only these three that are irregular. So estar, a verb that is like, oh, I hate learning estar. Uh, no es irregular, es muy regular. Estaba, estabas, estaba. Why do we use estar? We use it for location, we use it for feelings. If you say I was happy, not I became happy, notice, but I was happy. That's a description of how you felt. And descriptions are imperfect. Boom. Case closed. It's done with. Okay. So estar falls into this category of lots of verbs that get used with imperfecto. Querer, to want. Because how in heaven's name do you peg a time limit on I wanted something? When did I start wanting it? When did I stop wanting it? There is no, it's not an event. To want something isn't an event. Okay? Preterite is the world of events. Imperfecto, imperfect is the world of descriptions, the world of used to be away or was doing something, okay? Uh, amar, usually uh, to love, often used in imperfecto. Saber, ooh, saber, often, often used in imperfecto because if I knew something, it's a mental process, not an event. So it has to go in, in, into imperfecto most of the time. It means actually saber changes its meaning if we put it into preterito, but that's a different problem. Uh, pensar, you know, oh, I thought this. Oh, he thought that. It'll be imperfecto because I can't tag a beginning and end on that. Considerar, creer, to believe. Esperar, uh, esperar when it means hope when it means hope, because hope is an emotion. So verbs of emotion, often verbs of thought processes, and a lot of these other little verbs that hang out the very first, maybe five, um, you know, they wind up being imperfecto a lot. Okay, here, so here's an example. Cuando era niño, mi casa era muy grande y bonita. When I was a kid, I was a kid is not an event. I was. It's not an event. I'm telling, I'm talking about how old I was, my age range. Whenever we talk about age ranges, it goes into imperfecto. That's considered a description. Okay. So when I was a little kid, my house was big and pretty. Cuando era niño, mi casa era muy grande y bonita. Okay. Vale. Uh, uh, just telling what what I was like, what my size was like, right? What my house was like. 
tenía muchas ventanas grandes. It had lots of big windows. If the house had big windows, that's not an event. It just had them. <laughs> had. If I had something in my purse, if I had something in my backpack, it was just laying there. That's not an event. It's imperfecto. La casa estaba en la ciudad. House was in the city. Entonces había mucho ruido alrededor. Uh, there was lots of noise around. Again, we're just describing what that area looked like, what that, that piece of, of plot that mi casa was on looked like. So that's, that was all description, that little thing there. Uh, here's another description. Uh, Recuerdo al perrito de mi abuelita. I remember my grandma's doggy, her little dog. Era un perrito, blan perrito blanco. I'm describing what it looked like. Estaba bien loco. It was yeah, really weird. weird dog. Yeah, acted weird. Estaba bien loco. It was a pretty crazy acting dog. Pero yo lo quería mucho, but I loved him a lot. The fact that I loved him is not an event. It's how I felt. And I can't tag it with, I started loving him. Now I'm in the middle of loving him. And now I'm ending loving. No, it's how I felt about him. So it's imperfecto. It's how I felt. El perrito pensaba que era un humano. Eso era muy chistoso. That dog thought he was a human, which was pretty darn funny. Okay. El perrito se llamaba Fito. Whenever you say somebody's name was, you always, always, always use llamarse as imperfecto. Always. Because you're not saying, ah, my child, you are born. I named my child. It's not I named my child. It's my kid's oh. name was, which translates to the idea of my kid's name used to be. That's not an event. It goes into imperfecto. El perrito se llamaba Fito y siempre comía la comida del gato. And he ate the cat's food. Guy, okay. Vale. So, uh, the siempre comía is a little different thing. That goes into this idea of hábitos and acciones repetidas. We use imperfecto to talk about habits, things you did over and over again, but we don't know how many times, just a lot, a bunch of times. Okay. Often, frequently, a lot. So when everybody, when, when anybody uses for you the idea of a verb in imperfecto, it'll either be a description or, uh, well, they used to do this. They were doing this where we in English would say somebody used to walk his dog at six o'clock every morning, or she used to take a swim as her exercise five times a week, that's repeated action. If we can say used to swim, used to walk, was walking, was swimming, they were swimming, that idea in English translates as this category number two of hábitos, acciones repetidas. So if the idea you want to convey was it was happening, then we need to use imperfecto, okay? Uh, and here we've got a couple of examples. So, cuando era más joven, siempre viajaba a la playa durante los veranos. You're talking about what happened every single summer, okay? Uh, when you were young, when you were young is just a description. Cada día caminaba en la playa y nadaba en el mar. A veces comía en la habitación, pero generalmente me gustaba encontrar restaurantes nuevos. And when I want to talk about what I used to like, if I used to like stuff as a kid, that talks about a description of my feelings. That's got to be imperfecto. Okay. Um, mi hermano y yo éramos atletas. Uh, cada día teníamos que practicar. My brother and I were athletes. We used to be athletes. It's not an event, just what we were. Every day we had to practice. We're talking about every day, cada día. That's a little clue. Hacíamos ejercicio uh, 
Toda la mañana, we used to work out or we used to exercise all morning. Después nos bañábamos y comíamos el almuerzo porque siempre teníamos mucha hambre. All right, and this gets across the idea. In English, we might say something like, after we would uh, uh, take a shower or take a bath or a bathe, and, and after we used to eat, we're talking about our routine, which was consistent most days. Uh, we always were very hungry, okay? Um, okay, bien. Um, we're gonna leave the ejercicio for now. We're gonna leave the ejercicio. Do you have, do you have a question before I leave about this whole imperfecto thing, why we use it or? what form you get used to it the more stories you hear that's the point we're going to go through no nada nada okay bien pretérito is a little more complicated oh this I, is oh, oh perdón sí juanita dime a bear goes to a bia and does and that mean it. used to have or have no it means there was, there was, or there were, there just was, like I were. means there is, there are. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's, plural. all right. It's that we're. Había, yeah. Habi, haber is, is a, haber, the verb it comes from is one of the very few verbs in, in Spanish that is an, in, or has a use as an impersonal yeah. verb. It's not um, really yeah. talking about a human being like one person. It's a very generalized verb. Yeah, it's 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 odd. It's an odd. It, yeah. Uh, haber can be used for yo, tú, él, él, usted, nosotros, but when it works in a compound tense, oh. that's a different animal. Okay? okay. So when we use it as the impersonal haber, meaning there is, there are, there was, there were, it's había, and boom, you don't have to think about it. Okay. It's just, it's that word, había. Boom, done. Oh. Bien? Sí, gracias. Okay, de nada. Uh, okay, so our endings for pretérito, these endings here are very, uh, are the regular endings. And I want you to notice something. We get uh, the AR verbs again go into one camp, the ERIR verbs go into another camp. So here are the endings. But notice, most always means a we, and N at the end always means a bunch of people. I'm not in the group though, a bunch of people with an N at the end. Ooh, we just gotta know this L A usted one. We just gotta know this yo one. Notice the two here does not get an S. Now I'm gonna tell you, it is common in Mexico to hear people putting an S on the end of the two form, but it's not right. It's a mistake that native speakers in Mexico, not in Spain, not in Colombia, not in Argentina, frequently do. And the kind of, I'm gonna say urban legend is that the reason they do that is they're used to all the two verbs get an S at the end. I believe that urgent le urban legend. All the other conjugations for tu get an S at the end. So shouldn't it be trabajaste? But it isn't. But you will hear people. <coughs> okay. So, but I diverge. I digress. Here we go. Mm. ER and I verbs share the same. Okay. So they'll do these. Y, iste, yo, hieron, imos. Uh, now those are for the regular verbs. Sadly, sadly, the huge curveball with preterite. And the one that's big and bad and nasty and nobody likes. Nobody who learns this tense likes it, by the way. So if you don't like it, welcome to the club. There are millions of people who hate this tense. It has tons and tons and tons of irregular verbs that you just have to get familiar with. So we'll only see a few of those today. Here are some they show you. And they're pretty weird. Look at that thing with ir. Fui. Yeah. Fuiste, fue, fueron, fuimos. Where the heck does that F come from? How do you get an F out of ir? I got no clue, folks. But 
there are many, whereas imperfect has only three irregulars in the whole language, preterito, I can't even count the number of irregulars for you. There are so stinking many of them. Okay. And you just get used to them over the years. But so what we're going to leave with, I don't expect you to know all the irregulars. We'll go over some that are common, but we use why do we need it? Well, if we need imperfecto for descriptions or to express the idea of uh, frequent habitual actions or the idea of, um, uh, uh, of expressing I was walking or I used to walk, preterito, it's but closed. It happened. It's over. That's preterito. Preterito, when you see eventos grandes, now she describes it in, in the video that accompanies this. I'll send you the link. She describes it as big events, but literally it can be any event. She says, oh, you know, big things like I graduated, I got married. I, you know. It's not just big events. Any event. Any event. If I drove to the car, got out of the car and left the car, it's done. I drove to the grocery store. I'm not talking about what I did every day, go to the grocery. No, not I used to go to the grocery store, but the idea of I drove, I went to the grocery store. I went there. And I'm talking about this many times. That's preterito. Anything that is an event is preterito. Okay. And it doesn't have to be big or unique. She puts that in her guide, but it doesn't have to be. But that's an easy way to kind of get used to the idea of it being an event that you're born. Well, you do that once. You're done with that. Uh, unless you're a James Bond movie fan, you only die once. Okay. Uh, yeah. Casarse, uh, well, uh, well, you get married. It's still an event. Even if you marry multiple times, you got married and it was an event and it was over. Uh, you know, divorciarse, graduarse. Oh, if you had a baby, thank God that's a one-time event and that kid is now done and out. Okay, we're done with that. Hallelujah. Gracias a Dios. Uh, bought a house. Well, I bought a house. You know, even if it's not a house, I bought this shirt. Well, I did it and now it's done. Yeah. That was an event. Uh, ganar un premio, win a prize. That generally needs to go into preterito. When you start, if you want to say, I started to, I started to talk, I started to cry, I started to laugh, I started to clean up that mess that the pet left behind. I started to goes into preterito because it means, oh, began it. Okay, es un evento. It's an event. So let's look at a couple of examples. Actually, we'll, uh, yeah, see. Sí. Nací en 1995. I was born in 1995. <laughs> Yo no, okay. Uh, I was born. That's an event. Once it's done, it's done, baby. En la universidad estudié uh, lenguajes. Now, estudiar could be used both ways, estudiaba or estudié, but she's talking about I'm done being at university. I'm not there anymore. She's likely put it into preterito. If the idea she wanted to convey was I was studying, then she might choose to use imperfecto instead. But if what she wants to convey is I studied at languages, it's preterito, estudié. Me casé con mi mejor amigo. Y nos mudamos a otra ciudad. I married my best friend and we moved to another city. Those are both events. Now, those are big events. They don't have to be big events to be preterite. Okay. Uh, she's got another example. Adoptamos un perrito el verano pasado. We adopted a pet. Well, once you've done it, it's over. Yeah. Uh, fuimos al parque con el perro. Ayer fuimos al parque. Yesterday, we went to the park. Oh, I pegged it at yesterday. Not all the time, just yesterday. 
We went to the park y compramos un helado. We bought an ice cream. Vimos mucha gente con sus perros. We saw lots of people with dogs. E hicimos un amigo nuevo and uh, we made a new friend. Okay, those are all events, 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 events. Um, uh, I would say don't worry too much right now about um, events with a specific date. Although do know events on, that happened on a specific day do not indicate an event. You know, if I did it Friday, it's not Friday anymore, is it? So it's over and done with, right? It'll be preterito. Uh, if I did it, if I did something in noviembre, and I want to be specific about it, I did this in November, then it's done and over with because I mentioned a specific time period. Okay. So anytime like that, I'll let you read this over. We're going to leave that for a bit. Okay. A ver. So what you want to know probably is that um, your goal for the next few weeks is really, oh, I'm looking for something different here, is uh, really to get a little more familiar with just recognizing, oh, they're talking about something in the past, not to be able to use it perfectly yourselves, although I'll, I'll see if some of you can do that. So when I sent you this transcript, there was a plan with this to color code stuff so that you can see the action. Is it boom, 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 boom? In which case it's yellow, preterito. Or is it, oh, used to be, was happening. In which case then it's blue, azul. And it's, um, or perdón, I got those uh, switched around. <laughs> blue, azul, uh, imperfecto, uh, used to be or was doing. And amarillo. Uh, yellow is our uh, preterito, over and done with, over and done with. And I show you some verbs that you're going to, that you heard a lot in the video. Era, all these forms of ser, right? Era, 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 eramos, eran, tenía, tenías, tenía, teníamos, tenían. If I had something that's usually like 90% of the time really in imperfecto, because uh, I had something isn't an event. It's just the way it was. Okay. It's telling the state, there's a status. Uh, estaba and all of its forms. Estaba, 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 estábamos, estaban. Uh, when we talk about feelings or location. Uh, gustar very often in imperfecto and haber, that there was, there were. Okay. So I want to slide on down and then I'm going to open it to some questions. I'm going to slide on down to a specific paragraph where I want you to notice, ooh, uh, ooh, aquí, I had little stars I put in here um, late this afternoon, so I would know where to peg this. I'm going to kind of do a, a rolling translate here. This paragraph is a very typical thing. She's going to tell a little story. It is impossible impossible, 100% impossible to tell a story in the past using only preterite or only imperfect. They will mix. That's very uncomfortable for you right now. Yes. All I want you to recognize is it's in the past and get a feeling for, is it blue rolling along or is it yellow done an event? Okay, I'm going to do a loose translation here and see if you can figure out why it goes into the blue camp of Imperfecto or the yellow camp, you know, Equipo uh, Amarillo, yellow team, or Equipo Azul, blue team. Uh, uh, oh, they were talking about the little, the, the trick she played on her sister. Yeah, she was telling her, her story. And she was talking, okay, this involves a little egg. And, um, ooh, donde esta? Uh, here's the little thing she's talking about. So you know what it is. Oh. That's it. See, si kinder, kinder sorpresa. 
kitty surprise. It's a little chocolate toy that gets a little, little, little prize, a little toy, a teeny tiny worthless toy inside that stuff your kid begs for. Yeah. Like the McDonald's stuff. Yeah. That's what she's talking about. Okay. Oh, and her husband starts with, tiene un jueguito, no? It's got a little toy inside it, right? Oh. Yeah. And she says, yeah, e mm, yeah, it's got a little toy inside. It has a little toy inside. So that when our parents would, when our parents used to give us this little candy gift, uh, uh, when they would give us one, because they did it over and over again a bunch of times, when they used to give us this little candy, oh, we were really happy. Mm -hmm. All fe repeated action they used to give, we were happy how we used to feel. Mm -hmm. Equipo Azul, blue team. And I used to... I used to propose to my sister because she's initiating this and she did it a bunch of times. That's why she put it in proponia. Mm -hmm. I proposed to my sister that uh, we would do a little competition. We'd, we'd have a little contest uh, 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 which involved uh, one eating uh, um, in which if one were to eat the chocolate first, finish eating, eat it up. Se comiera means eat it up. If one were to eat up the, the chocolate first, you would lose. She says, I'm making up a game, little sister. We're each going to suck on this piece of candy. Whoever finishes the candy, uh, uh, um, whoever finishes the candy first, like eats it all up, you lose. Okay. Uh, teníamos que tener como mucho autocontrol. You had to have like lots of self-control. Mm -hmm. Make that candy last. Y comer muy lento. And eat really slowly. Para poder ganar. To be able to win. Uh, no sé por qué se nos ocurrió hacer ese concurso. I don't know what, how it occurred to me. That's kind of a special verb. Don't worry about it. But it's like, oh, it dawned on me. Let's play a game. I don't know how it occurred to me to make this game up. Uh, pero lo hicimos varias veces durante nuestra niñez, but we did it a bunch of times in our childhood. Y lo que hacía era trampa. And what I used to pull on her was a trap. I pulled a fast one on her. Trampa is a trap. Uh, and now notice she switches to, oh, in a previous video, I said the word tranza. And now that's an event. Oh, there was another video, dear listeners. And I said the word tranza. She says, ah, bueno, well, bueno, well, uh, I was a con artist. I used to be a con artist. I played a trick on her. I scammed my sister. Lo que yo decía, what I would say to her, because they did this a bunch of times, um, uh, lo que yo de, or what I said was, or what I said, what I said was that I used to separate, pull apart, separada. I used to pull apart my little egg in the middle, a la mitad, and later again into a quarter, in un cuarto. And without my and without my sister realizing it, and now she goes into what I used to do. I used to hide the quarter underneath my pillow, or someplace, and then I'd used to you know eat it really slowly. I'd eat the big part really really slowly, okay. And when my sister used to see that I was right about to finish the chocolate. She would start to sing, ah, yeah, yay, yeah, yeah, you're finishing up, I'm not. Okay, se sentia así. Oh, she felt like, she used to feel like, because this happened a bunch of times, I'm going to win. Okay, but 
lo que no sabía, what she didn't know, lo que no sabía, what she didn't know is that, uh, uh, you know, she thought that I finished up the chocolate, but I really did it, didn't, right? So she, ella se terminaba su chocolate después y entonces uh, yo sacaba el pedazo. So she would finish her chocolate and think she had won. And I would pull this little quarter I hid under my pillow, this little quarter of the little huevo. I pull it out and it's like, ha, gané. Ha, gané. Yeah, I won an event. And she was always really mad and really sad. And my sister was such a pretty little girl, so innocent. So, so tender, so nice, so cute. And I did this more than one time. <laughs> I pulled this nasty trick on her, this dirty little trick on her more than one time. Well, you know, they're probably like, you know, seven years old, five years old. Uh, uh, and she still didn't learn because she trusted me. Confiaba en mí. She still trusted me. And that's a feeling. <clears throat> She trusted me. She didn't learn. She still didn't learn because she trusted me. And she thought that I was, I was going to be honest. And now it's kind of like she's stepping back from being a teeny tiny snotty little kid and saying, it was really sad. Wow. Well, that was sad. Fue muy triste. Okay. But I hope you kind of get an idea of how that rolls. I'm just going to use that one example. What kind of questions do you have about anything that was in this transcript or some part of the story that you didn't quite get? Any part. And I would say leave the siblings out, the main stories that Anna and David told. The use of the word fue, fue there, is that was or si fue muy triste? Fue muy triste. It was the situation. So, fui, okay. Fui means yo. I was not sad. She's not saying I was sad or I went sad. Fue, mean, fue, fue, oddly enough, can either mean somebody went. Okay. Or it was. Fue is an odd case. We'll come back to fue next week, Danilo. You have an excellent question. And fue is kind of, a separate little animal we'll talk about a little bit more next week. Ser and ir, the short story is ser, the verb ser, and ir, the verb ir, in preterite, use the exact same verb. Hmm. So does it mean it was, or does it mean he went? You just know from context. I would never say that sentence, fue muy triste. I would never say she went very sad because that doesn't make sense. What it means is it was talking about the situation. It was really sad okay. that I was such a sneaky little snot to my sister. Okay. Um, Bien? Si, Kathy, pregunta. Could that also mean the sister was very sad? Oh, I thought it. Was. No, it couldn't. It <laughs> could not. Because wow. then I would say, estaba muy triste. Got it. Okay. We have to use estar with feelings. Estaba muy triste. She was really sad. So we're not talking about her, that she was sad. We're saying that was a bad situation. It was a sad thing because I pulled a dirty trick on my sister. The situation was a sad one. Okay. Bien? Okay. Anything else that happened in there that you're like, what was going on with this story? And then I want you to maybe do some stories about sisters and brothers. Otras preguntas. Any questions? Anything you didn't understand about? Let's kind of leave the siblings out of it, but the Davidiana, the two main speakers. Oh, I like Patricia, tienes una pregunta. No, but I like Adi's story the best. <laughs> okay. Nada, nothing? Okay, um, I want us to take some time to practice. I want you guys to take some time to practice. So if you've got a sibling story, now will be the time to pull that out of your hip pocket, out of your computer screen, out of your printed screen, or just, um, 
out of your brain, your gray matter. I'm going to give you Karen's because Karen can't be here tonight. And I want this to be very short and quick. So, and Karen had a very short and quick one. She can't be here tonight. She's got tickets to go someplace special. So uh, here is what I'm going to show. And actually, I'm going to show you. I'll show you the text while. Uh, and I'll highlight it. Vale, magnífico. And I'll read it. Voy, voy a leer, voy a leer, uh, leer eh, el ejemplo de Karen, ¿sí? Mi, en, en gris, en gray, ¿sí? Bien. Mi hermana era uh, un año y medio mayor que yo. She chose, she, wow, she was really brave. She chose, she's past. If you want to use present, go and do it. It's okay. Mi hermana era un año y medio mayor que yo. Uh, Por supuesto, of course. Por supuesto, ella aprendía a hablar antes que yo. She was learning to talk before I was. Sí, antes que yo. Uh, para hacerme aprender más rápido, to make me learn faster, ella me dijo, she told me, me dijo, and there is an event. She told me because it happened one day. Ella me dijo, and you just need to learn uh, that kind of memorize that little chunk of me dijo. To me, she told. Me dijo que debería sentarme, that I ought to sit down y, uh, uh, repeti uh, y uh, repetir. I forgot to tell her to change that one little part. Y uh, sentarme y uh, repetir. That needs to go back into uh, infinitive. Repetir cada palabra que ella dijo. And she told me I to sit down and repeat every word that she said. Okay. Bien. Hacíamos esto frecuentemente. She switched from dijo, she said, to hacíamos. We used to do this. Hacíamos esto frecuentemente. Así es como mi hermana me ayudaba a aprender a hablar. That's how my sister used to help me to learn to speak as a really little kid. Wow, she has nice siblings. <laughs> Mine used to try to force me to kill a spider with my bare hand. A great big scary black spider. Okay, bien. Uh, a ver, okay. Otra historia. Anybody, anybody else want to be brave and convey a story? No. Let's see if we can. Ooh, I know. It doesn't have to be in the past. If if what you want to do is in present, and I'll show you the present. Um, well, do I have? Yeah. So sometimes we do tell these stories using present in Spanish. Sometimes, sometimes. So you could put it into the present like this. You guys don't need to know that when I was a small child, I had a huge spider pho phobia. Yeah. Uh, I still cannot watch the movie Arachnophobia. I cannot watch it. No, no puedo. Uh, cuando yo tengo uh, como, como cuatro años y mi hermana mayor tiene, uh, tiene, uy, why did I get that repeated? Tiene uh, 11 años. Perdón. Uh, no nos gustan las arañas. ¿Sí? So there is presence. So if you only feel comfortable do, doing that, do that. We don't, you know, we don't like spiders. Uh, Hay una araña enorme y negra en la pared de la sala. There's a huge black spider on the wall in the living room. Mi hermana insiste en que yo tenga que matar la araña. My sister insists that I've got to go kill that great big black spider. Pero yo tengo miedo. Empiezo a llorar and I start to cry. Mi padre está enojado con mi hermana. My dad is angry with my sister. Y él mata la araña fea. And then you can see from my notes what, how that went into preterite. But, okay, bien. So if you want to put it in present, you can do that. Una historia, story. Alguien, be brave. You can tell it in any tense you like. Uh, ooh, dos Susanas. I've got two Susanas. Let me take Susana Zarka first. 
Bien, primero. Primera, la primera. It would help if I actually unmuted myself. Eh, sí, okay. así es. Um, todos los veranos, cuando mis hermanas y yo éramos jóvenes, nosotras visitábamos Maine. Uh, nuestra abuela vivía allí. En la isla, nosotras jugábamos con sus primos, nadábamos en el océano y recogíamos conchas. Era oh, conchas, 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 shells. Sí. Recogíamos, recogí, recogíamos. And then I just said, era muy diferente a nuestra vida en la ciudad. Era muy uh, divertido. Divertido. Or divertida, depending on what you're describing. Sí. Bien, bien. Now, notice how you use a lot of imperfecto, because you're talking mm -hmm. about something you did a, a bunch of summers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't say, I did them two summers, or I did it one summer, but what she did a bunch of times at grandma's. See? ¿Sí? Perfecto. Muy bien. Hiciste bien, hiciste bien. Felicitaciones. Okay. Dale. Ah, uh, Susana. Susana. No me okay, it's longer. Okay. Está bien. That's okay. Uh, un día de verano, cuando yo tenía cuatro años y mi hermano Jaime tenía diez años, escuchamos la campaña del vendedor de helados en nuestra calle. Sí. Good humor, man. <laughs> Le preguntamos a nuestra mamá si podemos tener 20 centavos para comprar una paleta, ella dijo que no. <laughs> Estances, I may, me dijo que fuera a la nuestra vecina en pidiera 20 centavos porque no teníamos comida en la casa. Ah. La vecina sospe sospechó de mi historia y fue a hablar con mi mamá. Mi mamá estaba furioso y avergonzada por la que habíamos hecho. Ah. Ella nos regaló a los dos, pero fue especialmente dura con Jaime, que debería conocerse mejor. Okay. And Susana, I want you to send me that whole thing sometime in the next day or two, because okay. there are a couple things we'd have to tweak, but that's okay, because for first try, that's really great. You, a lot of the, a couple of verbs you got a little bit mixed up, but it's okay, because we, we do get the idea of the, you know, Ice cream man came. Here's what happened. 25 centavos por una paleta. Wow. <laughs> Ahora no. Hoy en día. No. Ya no. Ya no. Not anymore. Ya no. 25 centavos. Ay, a ver. Okay. Sí. Uh, okay. But you get the idea. The ice cream man came, right? Y mamá. Dijo que no, dijo que no. She said, no way, kids. No. Okay. Um, so, okay. Uh, la mamá estaba avergonzada. She was embarrassed. Sí. Eso era. Okay. Bien. Uh, otro ejemplo. Otra persona quiere hablar un poquito. You don't have to put it in the past. You can keep it in present. Presente. Sí, Patricia. I'll call it. I'll hey, call it. Um, mine got a little long because I was trying to tell the story, but I'll try. Mi hermana y yo somos muy cerca en edad. Con mi hermana me lleva 18 meses. Now, that was something I saw in the 
on a transcript that you could say that. I never didn't know yeah. that. Uh, Yo recuerdo cuando mis padres la dieran a mi hermana una nueva bicicleta de dos ruedos para su cumpleaños. La ayudaran a tratar de mantener la nueva bicicleta. Sus amigos también pudieran tratar de montarla, pero mis padres me dieron que yo era demasiado joven. Ah. Cuando nadie estaba mirando, yo subí la bicicleta en la monte por dos por dos casas antes de mi care. Una casa más de mi hermana. Ah. Todos estaban enojados conmigo, especialmente mi hermana, pero no me importaba. Estaba <laughs> feliz y muy orgullosa. So I got on the bike without anybody helping me because I'd watched everybody do it and they wouldn't let me try. <laughs> muy bien. So here is one preterite verb which you will hear a lot a lot uh, and that is the form of decir decir is d-e-c-i-r right decir to say to tell so whenever you say when the ever the idea whenever the idea you want to convey is he said she said that's an event okay you'll notice in one part of the transcript David said, oh, my parents used to say, eat up all your food because you need to, uh, you know, nourish yourselves. And then it was decía, imperfecto. But most of the time, this verb decir gets put into preterite, preterito. So because it's super irregular, it doesn't follow a nice pattern. Why do we have a J when decir is D-E-C-I-R? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's why it's irregular. So uh, I would say, really, there are probably um, three forms of decir in past that you should just kind of try to memorize. They all have a J. So they'll all get a ch, ch, ch sound. So, dijo, I put it in chat box. Dijo, so make sure you open it up. Dijo, he said or she said. Dijo. And the little pronoun in front will tell who they said it to. So, por ejemplo, uh, me dijo winds up being me dijo he told me or she told me one person, whoever that one person is, he or she. Me dijo. The me doesn't mean I said anything at all. No, no, no. I'm on the listening end. Yeah. Me dijo. Me dijo. Uh, it's a good idea to just like know as a word group. Me dijo. He said to me, she said to me. Or this form of decir, the one for yo. Dije. Dije. I said. I told. So what if I want to say, I told him. I told him, I told him, stop that. I told him, get to work. I told him, come here, you sweetie, okay? Lady. Lady, le, ah. The le can mean her or it can mean him. Le does not have a gender. But you always say something to somebody. So it has to be a me. Whoever is on the receiving end of that verb decir has to be a me or a te or a le or a les or a nos. Okay. Bien. And the last one I want you to know is to say they said it's. They said or they told dijeron. Oop, perdón, I misspelled that, perdón. Wrong. Dijeron. It doesn't get an I. It gets one I, a J, and then eron, dijeron. So that first one's wrong. So, we, a ver. This one here. 
esto aquí, dijeron, dijeron. So, uh, they told us would become, nos dijeron, to us they told, nos dijeron. They told us yes, nos dijeron que sí. They told us no, nos dijeron que no. Boom. Decir is something you will hear over and over and over in the past to say that somebody said, somebody told. So that's a little chunk combination that you should just commit to memory, okay? Which is uh, why I put it at the top of the transcript to show you here are verbs that commonly, you're gonna hear them just in this form most of the time. So I'll probably tell you to go back and look over that. Okay. Uh, hay más historias. Any other stories anybody wants to tell? Ah, Federico. Uh, I did a much better job with my father than I did with my sister. So this is a story about my father. Ah. <laughs> and I had all kinds of trouble with poner and stuff like this. So here Ooh, we go. Okay. We'll help you along. Cuando estaba trabajando en la granja de mi papá, farm of my father, and then I ran into trouble on puse versus pone versus pongo, you know, I got into trouble on put, okay? So what's the idea you want to say there, Fred, before you um, say what you got I in trouble? I put la serpi uh, serpiente, I put. Oh, snake. you put a snake. Well, that's right. an event, isn't it? <laughs> right. That's an event. Okay, I'm going to put in chat box what that should be so you can get over this hump. Okay. Uh, okay. And let me ask one more thing. Did you put it on the ground or did you like put it down somebody's pants or did you <laughs> in, put it in a box inside uh, in a box? Su, yeah. In su camion. In, in su? In camion. 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 Truck. 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 See. Si. Okay. There are two things you might say. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take the put here. Um, and if I did it, It'll be that, puse. Puse sure does not look like poner. Where does that S come from? I don't know. But that's the way you say I put something. But that's a clear event. It's not you did this every week, right? Right. Okay, <laughs> now you know that one word puse. Now pop it in. Okay. Um... Uh, so once again, cuando estaba trabajando en la, la granja de uh, mi papá, uh, puse uh, la serpiente en su camión. Is the accident on the A cam camión? Camión. Camión, Cam truck. Camión, okay. Um, and I questioned a little bit about the indirect pronoun, I mean the direct pronoun, but I put uh, hmm. uh, no le viemos hasta fuimos fuimos in el tráfico. Ah, okay. He, we didn't see it or he did not see it? We. He, okay. At that point, we. Okay, so he didn't see it. No, we didn't. At that point, it was us. So it was, Okay, okay. Us. We did not see it. Right. Okay. So probably you're really going to want that as an event. We didn't see it. Uh, no la vimos. So no la vimos because serpiente is a feminine thing. Even if it's a boy snake, it's a feminine thing. Oh, la. oh that's right. Okay. Yeah. Because no, I don't say I saw to him indirect. I say I saw it or we did not see it. No la vimos. Okay. So why isn't that? Le instead of la? Because ver never, never takes an indirect object. Ah, so. Ah. Okay. Um. Can, I, can I express that idea in English as we saw to it? We saw for it? No. Can I take that decir? And express it as I said to him, I said to her, yep, then it's indirect. Mm -hmm. But if you say, what's the action of that vimos? Vimos, 
vimos, quiere decir, means, quiere decir, we saw. What did you see? It, a thing. That means it's a direct object. And it has to be. It can't be anything else. I see. I got it. Okay. And then I, my final <clears throat> question was, way back when we were talking about the Havelina book, and I asked you a question about, um, I think it was Little Havelinas, and the Pequeno, Pequeno was in front instead of Havelinas with Pequeno in back. And I thought, God, I wonder if I have Grande in the wrong place. I have Una, Una Sopresa Grande uh, por mi padre. So can I get away with Grande Sopresa or is it Sopresa Grande? Oh, ah, que gran sorpresa. Sí. What, what a great surprise. <laughs> right. Que sorpresa grande. What a big surprise. Sorpresa you grande. might hear it either way, oh, honestly, good. but it would, but if it comes in front, it'll get shortened, truncated from grande to gran. Oh, I would have failed that test too. <laughs> uh, look, Federico, here's the point. If you say grande sorpresa, will they know what you mean? And then they call me a gringo. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but our objective first, because see, it'll, it'll, it'll never come out smoothly if you have to second guess every single thought you have. So sometimes you have to just get the idea out of your mouth, make it come out. And, and if you make a mistake, so be it. At least you give the listener the opportunity to get the idea. If they don't get it, you'll get a puzzled look and they'll ask you a question or they may, you know, just be paternalistic. Ah, they're there, <laughs> but They'll probably help you around with it or ask a question to clarify it. But at least you got the big idea words out there. So never be afraid to get your train of thought out and, and don't worry yet about that word order. Get the idea out. You can fix the stuff at the end. Gracias. Okay, de nada, okay? Vale, bien. Bueno, gracias, Federico. Okay, hay, otra, uh, oh, hay otro ejemplo. Is there any other example somebody would like to share with us? Sean valientes, be brave. <laughs> sí, no, sí, no. Tic toc, tic toc, tic toc. Okay, oh, ah, Catalina. Um, it's not a story, but it's, it tells what life is like with my family. Would that be okay? No, I can't remember any pranks anybody pulled with anybody. Anything is okay. Anything you want to say is okay. Okay. Cuando era niña, cuando yo era niña, compartía un dormitorio con mi hermana. We shared a bedroom. A menudo nos peleábamos. We often argued. Um, cuando ella... Quería la puerta abierta. Yo la quería cerrado. Oh, wanted the door open. The other one wants it closed. No. Okay. Cuando yo quería la ventana abierta, ella la quería cerrado. Pero um, um, nos gustaba jugar putas. A menudo jugábamos con nuestras muñecas or dolls y nos gustaba jugar juegos de mesa como Candyland y Checkers. Is that juegos de mesa, table games, board games, CC? Sí, sí. Okay. That's all. Okay. Bien. Okay. Habitos. You have some habits you know, and, and how people used to feel. Está bien. That is great. Okay. Hiciste bien. You did well. These are baby steps, remember, people. So don't be afraid of, 
you know, making a mistake because it's not the end of the world. Okay. Hiciste bien. Vale. Hay otra historia. Hay otra historia o no? No. Uh, voy a darles una historia más. Uh, si ustedes quieren interrumpirme, está bien. If you want to interrupt me, that's fine. Okay. Cuando yo, mm, uh, let's see if you can figure out what happened in this story. Okay. Uh, cuando yo tenía como mm, siete años y mi hermana mayor tenía 14 años, um, un día todos los parientes de, de mi padre vinieron, vinieron a nuestra casa para una visita. ¿Sí? Uh, no recuerdo, no me acuerdo de del día exacto, quizás durante la Navidad, quizás durante el verano. No me acuerdo de la estación, pero vinieron todos los parientes de mi papá. Ok, en total, mi papá tenía, he did not give birth, so I use tenía, you only use a past if you got gave birth not for had a family mi papá tenía en total nueve hermanos y sus nueve esposas tíos y tías todos vinieron a nuestra casa ok ah, la casa estaba llena de todos los tíos ah, 25, 24 personas. Había muchas personas en nuestra casa para visitar. Pues mi papá estaba muy ocupado con sus hermanos hablando. Y mi papá, uh, uh, o no, en este caso nuestro papá, Uh, nos dijo a mi hermana y yo, mi hermana y yo, nos dijo, nos dijo, ah, chicas, no tengo tiempo. Ustedes tienen que preparar bebidas, bebidas para los tíos. Y cuando ella uh, nos dijo, uh, ustedes tienen que preparar bebidas, lo que quería decir es bebidas alcohólicas, alcohólicas para los tíos. Y yo tenía siete años, siete años. No podía, no podía beber alcohol. Yo no. Y yo no sabía nada de preparar una bebida con alcohol. Sabía que había un una botella de whisky en la cocina, pero no sabía. Entonces, yo le dije a mi hermana, ¿cómo preparamos una bebida alcohólica, un highball? Los highballs eran bebidas muy populares en los años 60, los años 70, sí, con mis tíos. Ok. Bien, hermana, hermana, le dije, I told her, le dije, ¿cómo preparamos un highball? No sé, no lo sé, no lo sé. Ella, ella que tenía, ya tenía 14 años, tampoco sabía nada. Ella tampoco sabía nada de preparar un highball. ¿Vale? Sí, ok. Entonces, ella, ella, mi hermana, me dijo, ah, bueno, tenemos que mezclar, que tenemos que mezclar como ginger ale y ah, un refresco, ¿sí? Un refresco con whisky. Ah, yo le dije a mi hermano, o a, a mi hermana, ¿cuánto de whisky? 
ella me dijo, no sé, no lo sé, un, un poco de whisky, no sé. Entonces, tomamos esta cantidad de whisky <risa> en un vaso con esta cantidad de ginger ale, un refresco. Y, uh, y, y lo mezclamos muy bien. Y lo mezclamos y usamos toda la botella de whisky para preparar, para preparar como 14, 15, quizás 20 highballs, ¿sí? Para los tíos. Y, uh, uh, sí, y, uh, ah, trajimos, trajimos las bebidas a todos los días. Oh, aquí, tío Andrés, aquí tienes la bebida. Ah, aquí, ah, tía Clara, aquí tienes la bebida. Y después, después de, de probar, probar, después de probar las bebidas, nadie, nadie pudo beber los highballs, era como beber casi todo whisky, ¿sí? Excepto mi tío Benjamín. Mi tío Benjamín, sí, sí bebió todo el whisky y estaba muy borracho toda la noche. Ok, y eso es, ok. ¿Entienden? ¿Entendieron ustedes lo que...? ¿Sí? ¿Bien? Uh -huh. Es una historia muy tonta, pero sí, de verdad. Never send your 7 and 14 year old to fix a drink. <laughs> Éramos niñas muy, muy ingenuinas. We, we, we had no clue. Ok. Uh, bueno. Ok. Uh, lo que quiero uh, decirles. What I want to show you next is a separate little section and we'll go back to a bit of a show unless somebody has something to share now anybody else alguien más alguien más or no 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 uh this weekend i'm going to want you to maybe listen again if you no actually i'm going to send you two different little very short videos but there'll be two or three past tense stories but they're going to be super short they won't be like the ana y david they're going to be super short um but i want to show you a quick example that David has where he had, it was mostly event oriented. So this is going to show you a little more preterite. Okay. So I want to show you the contrast. And again, I have the start. So if you want to go back to this and look for the little asterisks, that'll be a nice clue. I'll, I'll make them big and bold uh, when we're done with class. Now he's he's relating a story, and I'm going to do a, a rolling translate here. Okay, uh, si sí, tal vez, yeah, maybe, and I'm not sure what I forget the context of yeah, maybe. Pero bueno, el punto es que nosotros fuimos a un oxo. The point is we went to an oxo, and oxo is just a 7-Eleven kind of store. That's all you need to know. Everybody calls it oxo because that's the name of the store. Okay, bien. Un oxo para los que han visitado México, and oxo for those who have visited Mexico. So uh, are, are these are these little stores, are these little convenience stores uh, where you can find stuff fast and, uh, and, and they're all over the country. Están por, están por todo el país, they're all over the country. Okay. Y bueno, and well, and you'll notice he says well a lot. Bueno, 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 bueno doesn't mean good here. Almost never. Bueno is a pause word. Well, well. And he says, bueno, okay? So, uh, bueno. So, he says, well, uh, we went to an OXO in Cancun. Oh, like the hotel district. Uh, and also, lots of people know that Cancun is like one of the most important resort areas in Mexico. And therefore, it's full of foreign people. Um, and now here's where he starts a, this happened, then this happened, then this happened, and you hear very little imperfecto, but lots of preterito. So 
he's going to be do a sequence of events. What first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the things that happened. And when we went into that place, we bought a little water, candies, food, I don't remember. And when we got to the cashier, cash register, uh, to the person who was waiting on us, he goes into imperfect because he was waiting on us. He spoke to us in English, an event. He spoke to us in English. And for us, it was, oh, there's that troublesome word again, Danilo. Fue. Uh, it was like a shock because you're in your own country and you think that you look Mexican and all that. Uh, and he had talked before about how he thinks his brother looks kind of Asiatic or like certain people think he has Asian features. So that's why he they, they was talking to them in English. And, and I'm almost sure that that person thought it just, when he uses pencil, even though it's a thought process, oh, it struck that person because he looked at my brother and said, oh, he looks Asian. It struck him. So he used pencil that that person thought that my brother was Asian, Korean, or Japanese, Chinese, I don't know. Uh, then he began to speak to him and notice Federico, hablarle, talk to him, to mm -hmm. him. He began to talk to him in English and he asked us, uh, uh, how we had found everything that we were looking for. Oh, did you find everything you were looking for? It's that standard thing. Even in Mexico, they teach you to do that when you're an employee and, uh, and, uh, and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so, and all that stuff. And our reaction was like, was like, así como, well, really surprised. Yeah. And so much so that, uh, Oh, that the person, uh, uh, I think that he, oh, uh, the person, I think he thought that we didn't even speak English uh, because he began like making sign language, like going okay, say, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, like making signs with his hands. Uh, and then the funniest thing was, fue. And the funniest thing was, that my brother and I were so surprised. And now he switches to imperfecto because it's a feeling. We were so surprised. This is how we felt. And well, I don't know. Uh, we were just, you know, relaxing, having a good time and all of that. And now he has an event. We decided, we decided to talk to him in English. And then my brother answered him. It's an event. He answered. Just like he said, he answered is an event. And he answered, oh, yes, everything is okay. Or something like that. Oh, algo así. Uh, and now he switches back into, here, this happened, this happened, this happened. They're all events. Uh, ooh, perdón. Uh, then, okay, we paid already. I don't know what. And uh, the, moment, uh, the moment we left that way, uh, going through the door, crossing through the doorway. And the two of us stood there looking at each other and we just doubled over laughing. Nos atacamos de la risa. We just burst out laughing. Laughter attacked us. So that means they bent over, probably bent over or laugh my mm off. Yeah, we laughed our mm off. Okay. Uh, porque fue una experiencia muy, muy divertida because it was a really funny experience. Uh, thinking uh, that in your own country, they thought you guys were foreign. Wow. But you'll notice in that whole paragraph, because he wasn't describing very much, because he was saying this happened and the guy said this and we answered that and we bought this stuff, it wound up being very event driven and much more preterite rather than describing stuff. Entienden, understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Bien? Yep. okay. Um, what I'm gonna do for you for the coming week is 
I'm going to ask you, I won't, uh, I will give you some new videos that are going to be very short to tell short stories. Okay. In the past, you can watch that in a very easily consumable, uh, little short stories. And I want you to go back to this Imperfecto page. I'll send it again in the, the, uh, email. And I want you to try for doing that fill in the blank at the bottom this coming week. So you're going to look at all the examples of the examples up here at the top of the chart and see if you can just do the conjugating an imperfecto in the bottom fill in the blank and see if you know what that means when you finish with that. Okay. Now this part will be easier because there are so few irregulars for imperfecto. And next, I'm going to want you to go back to the preterito, the preterite charts. And I want you to go down to the bottom here and try to do some of these just in preterito. You don't need with the fill in the blank to decide, is it preterite? Is it imperfect? Just these are all either all preterite or all imperfect, according to the page. Okay. And we've got one very irregular thrown in there. And that's the very first one. Ir, ir for preterite, ir for preterite is highly, highly irregular. And you're going to need to use this, whoops, this form here in the middle a column. Whoops. Those fui words. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be the lead off. But the other ones that she uses, I'm gonna do a quick eyeball, quick eyeball. Yep, yep, yep. They're all regular verbs because she's not throwing you any curveballs here. So that'll all be preterite. And um, so I want you to try the fill in the blanks. I want you to listen to the extra. I can't remember if it's two or three videos that will tell very short stories in the past. And see if you can just get the feel for, are they using, you know, are they talking about events or are they describing stuff in this very short video? Bien? Mm -hmm. Bien? Okay. Sí. Sí. If, if you feel up to this, and this is only if you feel up to it, because the best way to learn this is to just hear a lot of examples and then try a little nugget yourself. If you feel up to, if you didn't do a story this week and you want to try a little story, or if you just want to make it super mundane and just say, here's what I did today. Here are three things I did today. And use a little bit of past. Whether you choose to use imperfecto or preterito is up to you. And we'll just play with it a little bit. But listen to lots of examples in the little videos I give you first and try to do the little fill in the blank first, and then maybe tell me a few little things, but don't make it a big, long story. Baby steps. Si? Bien? Si. si. Todo bien? Si. si. Fantástico. Okay. Uh, eso es todo. That's it. Es todo para hoy. If you have any questions midweek, always feel free to ask. Uh, email me, give me a quick email and ask a question. That's just fine. Uh, because sometimes that's the one little thing you need to get over the hump. So be it. And the light bulb goes on and you're like, yeah, I got this. Okay. Está bien? Sí. Okay. Excelente. Entonces vamos a terminar la grabación. Uy, a ver. Oh, uh, I am. Gracias. Oh, and it does oh, ask yes. me if I want to record to the cloud. Yes, I do. Gracias. Adios. Okay. Sí. Adios. Adios.